Hello again. This is going to be a quick video where I show some additional changes that I made to the YX360 TRE. So currently I have the Bryman attached to a small bench power supply. You can see it's putting out 50 volts. This particular supply is capable of putting out a little over an amp. You can see about uh, 1.7, 1.8 amps. So we're going to attach this power supply to the YX360 TR. You can see it's on the 50 volt scale and it's full scale so reading roughly 50 volts. So what I'm going to do is rotate the knob through all of its settings and let's just see if we can damage this meter. So there's our 50 volt, 10 volt, 2.5, 0.5, 0 0.1 volt or 50 microamps, 2.5 milliamp, 25 milliamp, 250 milliamp, continuity test, 10x, 100x, 1k, 10k, off. This is our 10 volt AC, 50 volt AC, 250 volt AC, and 1000 volts AC. Normally in the current settings this would blow the fuse. Same thing with continuity test. These would all blow the fuse. So you may be curious, does it even work? Put her in resistance mode. And we'll adjust this thing down a little bit. And so let's just put a 50 ohm resistor in here. And you can see it's reading roughly 50 on the top scale, which it should. So here is our 100 ohm. Go up a scale. And it's close enough. So here's with a 1K. And we'll go up a scale. Here's with a 10K. And up one division and here's with a 100k. So let's just zero this out. Again so here's a 100k and here's a 1 meg. So again not real accurate but it does work. Obviously the DC volts works. Let's try it in current mode. So if I place the meter in the 50 microamp scale, so 50 microamps would be read off of the 50 scale. So this is again roughly 25 or so microamps versus uh, 22, 23 on the Bryman. Of course the burden voltage on this is going to change quite a bit, so let's just watch what happens. So you can see just changing the range, we've now increased the current to 400 microamps. So this would be a 2.5 milliamp scale. So this would be 2.5 milliamps on the bottom or just shy of 500 microamps. You can see it's just one tick below. This will be roughly 7.5 milliamps. So again, I've got the meter now on the 25 milliamp scale. So 25 would be the bottom scale here so that would be 10 milliamps or 5 or the center would be roughly 7.5 alright so this is roughly 168 milliamps so there's 150 and that would be 175 and 200 here so it looks like it's a tick over 175 another thing you may have noticed is when I had the DC voltage applied when I switched it to the AC volt mode we didn't read anything so currently I have the Bryman attached to the signal generator. See I'm putting out roughly 7.1 volts. So it's on the 10 volt range. So there would be 6 volts or 8 volts. Center tick would be 7. And then one tick above, so about 7.2 volts. So let me go ahead and I'll increase the frequency. Again this is at 40 hertz. And this would be 100 hertz. And this is almost 500 hertz and 2 kilohertz now this meter is going to roll off you can see it's just starting to attenuate there and this is roughly 15 kilohertz so we've definitely hurt the bandwidth by installing that cap in the first video I'd mentioned that I'd placed a shocky diode in series with the two AA batteries and then I'd place this TVS diode in parallel with this series combination. And then I'd also placed a TVS diode 
down here between our common point and this center wiper for our resistance measurements. Of course the next problem would be if we place the meter in the current mode. Of course all the current's going to flow through through our sense resistors and right out through the common. So we would typically blow our fuse. So I, what I've done is I've replaced this fuse with a PTC. Again this meter just came with a little glass fuse. Of course, if we hooked this up to our large transient generator, this thing would have just exploded, literally. So what I've done with this PTC to get that to trip, I've placed two additional diodes in parallel across these sense resistors. So on the 250 milliamp scale, we have a 1 ohm sense resistor. On the 25 mil, it's a 10 ohm, and the 2.5, it's a 100 ohm. So basically, 250 millivolts are seen at this point relative to our common. So then that signal is tapped off of this center wiper, which then feeds down through this R9 3K into our meter works. So what I've done is I've placed these two silicon diodes across these sense resistors. And again, because it is 250 millivolts, these won't leak. I tried it with some shocky diodes, and unfortunately it leaks too much. The other thing that I've done is I've lifted the node here, this resistor R13, and now I'm attaching that input through a capacitor. So that's how come now you don't see the DC offset. And this capacitor value is low enough where I can read down into about 30 hertz is where it'll start to roll off again. So the PTC that I'm using, uh, this has a series resistance of roughly 5 ohms at room temperature. It's a 600 volt part. And these will trip in the you know 5-600 milliamp ranges. The problem with adding that series resistance is once the meter's in conductivity mode, you could not adjust the knob here enough to get that thing to zero out. So what I did is I reduced the value of R19 just a slight amount, so about 40k ohms now to compensate for that 5 ohm drop. And now I have plenty of adjustability in that range. Of course at 22 ohms uh, the power dissipation across this with 11 volts is going to be way too high. Same thing with a volt essentially dropped across this uh, 1 ohm resistor. That's way too much power so I've gone ahead and I replaced these two resistors with a higher powered device. And the last thing I did was place a mob from the input lead down to this side of the PTC. The mob will clamp at the 1400 volts and the rest of the voltage will be dropped across our PTC. So I think with those additional changes here, this meter is actually fairly robust now. Uh, I wouldn't have to worry about it blowing a fuse anymore, obviously. I don't know if it'll stand up to our transient generator. Obviously, uh, it'll handle a 50 volt DC signal. And again, I could reverse the polarity of that DC voltage. It wouldn't be a problem. Uh, that's the whole reason of having these back-to-back -back diodes. I went through as far as having this TVS in there. Uh, once the signals are reverse biased, it basically feeds the current through the TVS this direction, so we end up with a lower drop. And again, this diode will block it going into the battery pack, and this TVS will eventually clamp and feed it back to our other input pin. So let's just try this now on our transient generator, and we'll see if this thing can survive. Last time I had the meter on the transient generator, we enabled our AC line voltage. And then I was rotating the knob through its different ranges. And you can see now what's happening. That'll trip the current sense inside of this generator. So again, this generator is actually trying to see if there's a problem with the meter and prevent any damage from happening to the meter. So I've got that current limit set right now to about 40 milliamps. And that's one of the reasons I tested this with the 50 volt DC power supply because I had a little over an amp and a half available. So I can't actually run this AC test with this meter. What will end up happening is it just basically turns off the output. Uh, let's just go ahead and we'll apply our transient to it. And let's just see what happens. What I'll do is we'll just give it a single transient And this is like a thousand volt. So again, that was a 1000 volt transient. 
it was just a single event but I did run through every setting of the meter with that thousand volts and you can see there probably isn't any damage to that meter these are the resistance modes and this is our DC input it's just with a 9 volt battery that should read roughly 9 volts it does and again this is the current input I'm not going to go through and test it for accuracy but it hasn't opened up any of the devices in the meter which would normally be what happens all right so I've gone ahead and set this for 4,000 volts again of course this is where I ran the meter the first time and we caused a fair amount of damage with it and again I'm just going to run a single transient for each mode This is the number of cycles remaining. This is the capacitor bank voltage. So there's 2 kV. There's 3 kV. This is our bias voltage, somewhere around 12, 13 volts. And of course the meter isn't drawing any current. And of course you can see our DC voltage here, AC volts, continuity test again, zero out the meter roughly, and again so this is a 100 ohm resistor, and here's our 50 ohm resistor, so again here's our 100 ohm resistor. We'll go up a range and this will be a 1K. And we'll go up a range. This will be a 10K. And we'll go up a range. There's our 100K and here's our 1 meg. This will be with our DC calibrator and this will be roughly 5 volts and you can see no problems try it on the 50 volt scale yep no problem there and of course this is just going to rail the meter in these two modes same thing with the current And so again, I've uh, brought the Bryman out and I've placed the two meters in series. See the Bryman's reading roughly 245 milliamps. And we can see that's giving us a full deflection of the meter. Of course, we can't consider our testing completed on this meter without the fly swatter test. So again, she is live. And no problem. Okay, so I've just got it attached directly to the fly swatter. And you can see I'm on the 1,000 volt range. Of course, it just rails out the meter. Let's try it in the AC volts mode. No problem. It's the 250 volt mode. and no issues so there you go so our little fifteen dollar meter will survive our fly swatter test so again if I made this meter any safer I would say if it's at all possible I've actually probably made the meter less safe than what it was when it was purchased this thing is so chopped up on the insides you know it's scary to look at to begin with so I went back and looked at older schematics for higher end meters like Simpson 
and you know there's still basically the same type of technique through those meters very few of those offer any type of input protection so I have no doubt that if I were to hit any of those vintage meters with this transient generator I'm sure I would damage them somebody had pointed out a meter that was built in the 1930s I believe and that meter actually looked at the coil position and they would use that to essentially trip a breaker and so if the meter deflected one way or the other too far that would open circuit the meter the problem with something like that with this transient generator is the transients are so fast the needle won't even respond so the damage would already be done by the time the meter even thought about moving so i think that's going to be it for this video hope you found it useful or at least entertaining till the next meter